There is something very special I'd like to share with you related to the Bhagavad Gita. In 1980, a young American music composer named Philip Glass premiered a unique opera, Satyagraha, that depicts Mahatma Gandhi and his struggle for social justice in South Africa. The libretto, or text, for this opera is based entirely on verses from the Bhagavad Gita which are sung in the original Sanskrit, making this opera one of a kind in the world of music. In 1893, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, who was just 24 years old then, went to South Africa to work as an attorney. He soon encountered the widespread prejudice suffered by Indians there, who were severely oppressed by the ruling white colonists. He was drawn to help a group of Indian merchants who were trying to change the government's laws that unfairly discriminated against immigrants. It was at this time that he formulated a strategy for social reform that he called Satyagraha, after which this opera is named. The strategies that young Mohandas Gandhi developed in South Africa were to become essential years later in his fight for India's freedom from the British. The Sanskrit word Satyagraha is formed from Satya, truth, and Agraha, which means insistence or determination. Gandhiji himself called it truth force, and he said, I thus began to call the Indian movement Satyagraha, that is to say, the force which is born of truth and love and nonviolence. The future Mahatma thus became a Satyagrahi, a social reformer who employed nonviolent means to fight for justice. Thousands of others were to join him in this fight during his years in South Africa. The composer of this opera, Philip Glass, is perhaps the best-known classical music composer living in America today. Born in Brooklyn and trained in Europe, his music is filled with whirling rhythms and repeating patterns that seem to have a meditative effect. Even if you don't like Western classical music, I think you'll like his compositions. He was strongly influenced by his friendship and collaboration with sitar maestro Ravi Shankar and as a result, he developed a great love for Indian music. He also developed great admiration for Mahatma Gandhi and for the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. Glass was assisted by a librettist, Constance de Jong, in creating this unconventional opera that is completely Western in form, but based entirely on the Bhagavad Gita. This video presents several excerpts from the opera. The first excerpt is from its opening scene, which is entitled The Kuru Field of Justice, referring to Kurukshetra, the place where the Mahabharata war took place. There, Arjuna fought against the mighty Kaurava army with Sri Krishna's support. In a similar way, Mahatma Gandhi fought against the oppressive South African government with the support of Sri Krishna's teachings in the Bhagavad Gita. So. Just like Sri Krishna accompanied Arjuna on the battlefield, Krishna also accompanied Gandhiji in South Africa, figuratively speaking. And thus, Sri Krishna becomes one of the characters in the opera. The text for the first excerpt is based on two verses from Chapter 2 of the Gita, where Sri Krishna teaches the importance of remaining detached from the results of one's efforts. If killed, you will go to heaven. If victorious, you will get the kingdom. Therefore, Arjuna, get up and prepare for war. Hato va prapsyasi swargam jitva va bhokshase mahim tasmarutishta kaunteya yudhaya krita nishchayaha. 
look the same upon happiness and sorrow, gain and loss, victory and defeat. So prepare for war, you will incur no sin. Sukha dukhe same kritva, labha labha jaya jaya, tato yudhaya yudhyaswa, naivam papam avapsyasi. Sri Krishna's advice here is to strive not for success, but to strive as an act of devotion. This is one of the most important principles of karma yoga, and Gandhiji was indeed a great karma yogi. These two verses are sung in unison by Sri Krishna at center stage and Gandhi on the left in this excerpt from Satyagraha's opening act. This very colorful and dramatic production was actually performed in Russia in 2014. Other excerpts we'll see are from a production by the New York Metropolitan Opera in 2011. The next excerpt comes from the opera's second act, entitled Tolstoy Farm. 
Gandhiji was deeply influenced by the writings of Leo Tolstoy, and thus Tolstoy Farm became the name of the ashram that Gandhiji founded near Johannesburg with the help of Hermann Kallenbach, his dear friend and ardent supporter. The ashram was home to about 50 followers who worked in the fields and raised livestock. Gandhiji also lived there and instructed them in the practice of karma yoga and satyagraha. In this excerpt, while ashram residents work and assist Gandhiji with his correspondence, the ladies of Tolstoy Farm sing this verse from Chapter 3 of the Gita, in which Sri Krishna explains how karma yoga is to be practiced. Do your duties. Work is better than inaction. Your journey of life will not be successful without work. Niyatam kuru karmatvam karmajyayo hya karmanaha sharira yatra pichate naprasidhyera karmanaha in this same excerpt, Gandhi's friend, Herman Kallenbach, sings this verse from Chapter 5, where Sri Krishna extols the value of Karma Yoga as a spiritual practice. Spirituality and work are separate for fools, not for the wise. Following either properly, one gains the fruits of both. Sankhya Yoga Pratak Balaha Pravadanti Na Panditaha on the stage, you will see Gandhi's wife, Kasturba, dressed in red. Also, a special appearance by Leo Tolstoy himself, who is inserted into the scene with artistic license. How fortunate were those who lived with Gandhiji on Tolstoy farm, learning from him how to practice Karma Yoga and Satyagraha. The next excerpt is from the opera's final act, entitled Newcastle March, which refers to a massive protest organized by Gandhiji in response to a tyrannical new law that drastically restricted the freedom of Indians and other 
immigrants in South Africa. Thousands joined him in this history-changing march that struck a powerful blow at the government's immoral authority. The text for this excerpt comes from the beginning of chapter 4, where Sri Krishna declares himself to be an incarnation of God who has taken birth to protect good people, to destroy evil, and to restore dharma. I am the unborn, immutable self. I am the Lord of all. With nature under my control, I take birth by my own power. Ajopi son of Yayatma, Bhuta nami shvaropi son, Prakritam swamadishtaya, Sambhavam yatma mayaya. Whenever righteousness declines, O Arjuna, and unrighteousness grows, I take birth. Yada yada hi dharmasya, Glanir bhavati bharata, Abhyutanam adharmasya, Tadatmanam srijamyaham. To protect the righteous, to destroy sinners, and to restore righteousness, I am born in each age. Paritranaya sadhunam, vinashaya chadushkritam, dharma samsthapanarthaya, sambhavami yuge yuge. In the opera, these well-known verses are sung not by Sri Krishna, but by Gandhiji himself. By putting Sri Krishna's words into Gandhi's mouth, the opera symbolically suggests that like Sri Krishna, Gandhi too was born for the sake of protecting people and restoring dharma. This is a very powerful idea portrayed by the opera, that Gandhi is like an avatara, an incarnation of God.
Just as Sri Krishna guided Arjuna through the horrors of war, so too Mahatma Gandhi guided the Indian community of South Africa through an arduous struggle for justice. The opera concludes with this compelling idea and with the haunting melody of the final song. You might happen to know that Hindustani music concerts usually conclude with a piece in Rag Bhairavi. Composer Philip Glass followed this convention in the prior excerpt by concluding the entire opera with the notes of Rag Bhairavi. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa you can see here Pandit Ravi Shankar's influence on Philip Glass. The opera's final song that we just heard is so beautiful that it's often performed independently of the opera on a concert stage with piano accompaniment. Here is a brief rendition with Philip Glass himself at the piano. Vitrana yashaduna Vinasha yashadush kritam Dharma samsta parayaya Vinasha yashadush We come now to the final excerpt of this presentation, which is saved for last because it's probably the most memorable scene in the entire opera. It is entitled Confrontation, and it depicts the terrible incident when Gandhiji was confronted by an angry mob of racist white South Africans and beaten quite badly by them, leaving him bruised and bleeding. The lyrics are drawn from chapter 16 of the Bhagavad Gita, where Sri Krishna describes the nature of people with demonic personalities. Now I gain this, this desire I will fulfill, this is mine, more wealth will come. Hiramadhyamaya labdham, imam prapsye manoratham, hiramastidam apime, bhavishyati punardhanam. I killed that enemy, I will slay others. I am a rich master, I am perfect and powerful. Asau maya hata shatrur, hanishye cha paranapi, ishvaro hamaham bhogi, siddho ham balavan sukhi. In the excerpt, you will see huge menacing figures emerge which symbolically represent the forces of a dharma that Gandhi must confront in his fight for justice. You might also notice some subtitles added by a PBS television station which unfortunately put them in the wrong places. Yeah, no. 
what an amazing scene. Fortunately, Gandhi was rescued from the mob by the wife of the local police constable, and he was taken to safety. This concludes our presentation of Philip Glass's magnificent opera about Mahatma Gandhi's practice of Satyagraha, based on the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.